here at the Midwest LSA Expo, we saw an airplane that we've seen before, but we haven't seen it here before. And in fact, this little bird right here has never been in the U.S. before, I believe that's correct. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Todd, Todd Mitten. Anyway, Todd is uh, running a business. Uh, tell me a little bit about your business. And I asked you in flight about the airplane, but I want you to kind of repeat some of that for me. This is the German uh, Comco Icarus C-42, and it is Germany's hands down most popular airplane i think you told me 1400 of them flying and a lot of those are in flight schools and it is the leading aircraft of this class of airplanes in germany and has been for i don't know how many years a long time so tell me about your business why you picked this airplane and how this has been going for you so we picked this airplane uh, my partner and i started with ultralights advanced ultralights in canada and we wanted something for the ultralight class to to move up and a C-152 Cessnas and stuff to, to have some other option because you can get a class four medical in Canada as well. Um, it's also is in the SLA class in, in the US so it kind of fits in that nice uh, class for everybody. It's uh, all composite on the outside, uh, center aluminum boom so it's very light. This airplane weighs about 620 pounds so it still leaves over 600 pounds of useful load in there. Canada it's 1232 pounds for the ultralight and this is actually certified to 1200 pounds out of Germany. So okay so this particular airplane 1200 pound gross weight. Right correct. And and your empty weight you told me already but 600 pounds of useful so get to payload for me talk to me about how much fuel she's got on board and what that translates to what you can put in and carry places. Right so at 600 pounds from the aircraft uh, it's got a 65 liter tank which I believe is 17 gallons so which is about 100 pounds itself of fuel. So with your 600 pound load, that still leaves 500 pounds. So, wow, that's that's a heck of a number. That's two pretty big guys right. and some luggage. That's a great number. Where do you put the luggage and how much can you put wherever that is? Right, uh, the center of gravity is pretty tight right behind the seat. So there's a hatch on the side I'll show you and you can load it all back there easily. Okay, now I saw when I walked up to the airplane, you had that hatch off and we're not talking about a place where you got to slip in, uh, you know, uh, a little tiny little bag you got a pretty big opening there yeah I came down with my tent and my luggage and my mattresses and you know the whole works piled in the back so no problem with all that load now that looks I mean I'm looking back here at it it is just after the cockpit but that's got to have a limit back there how much can you put back there because it's not on CG obviously yeah I believe uh, from the factory they said 75 pounds back there obviously closer to the seats better so I just strap it in right behind the seat and uh, right beside the fuel tank so it's all even with that. How long have you been doing this and how's it been going for you Todd? We bought the plane late last summer so I guess you could say the first year is really getting your name out there a lot of advertising and stuff. There's uh, three planes now three Icarus and is that Icari? Three Icarus in Canada. Uh, two uh, other ones in Canada are being used at flight schools and they're configured for paraplegic flying in flight schools too in Canada so it's kind of a neat feature that you can add on. Uh, first of all uh, human factors let's call it uh, getting into the airplane uh, quite simple I just chose the method of putting my rear on the seat and yep. swinging my legs in Swing the doors you can see here come fairly well forward so it wasn't a matter of having to pull my knees up and chew on my knee to get my feet in the in the in the airplane now I'm only of about average height so a real tall guy might have a little more challenge and inside I would say it's a little snugger than uh, most LSA but not a lot and most LSA are quite wide so it's it's, 48 it's inches it is 48 inches okay and we're flying with the 100 horse uh, Rotax you said in it with the 80 horse engine basic instrumentation not with glass cockpit and not with a radio but still all you need to go fly and have a little fun 65,000 and that's US that's a very attractive number now folks that may change so we'll give you a web address at the end here you'll find out what it is later you can sell I presume in the United States as yep. well yep no problem selling in the states. Uh, we have one going to Wisconsin next month, so uh, yeah, no keeping them close to Canada there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I don't blame you. So, uh, other human factors: uh, four-point seat belts, and uh, one interesting thing. I don't know if the camera can see over here, uh, but the throttle looks like it's dangling down, like it's broken here. And I guess you could worry about that if you didn't know better. But what happens is the throttle gets out of your way because it's, it's sort of between your legs like a joystick. The joystick is actually a center stick and used by either, either occupant uh, in the center, obviously. But the throttle is kind of between the pilot's legs, but it folds down on a hinge to get out of your way for entry, which is really nice. Cause big, heavy airplanes, what is that and what's it doing for us? So that's a cowl flap, which is very rare on small airplanes, these LSAs. 
but that lets us uh, control the temperature. So we do a lot of flying in the winter, close that up, we warm up very quickly. And now if we're climbing out steep in a hot day, we'll open that fully and keep those temperatures right in the middle. Behind that cow flap, there's one radiator that Icarus is set in here. So it's a one single radiator with a heat exchanger to keep your temperatures between your oil and water very, very even. Okay, great. And I see you got a landing light right up front yep. too? Yep, we have a landing light on front, although you're only supposed to fly VFR anyway, so you don't really need it. But. Well, it can be used for traffic too. You that's can right. you can flash it or at least right. let people see you there, so that's yep. not bad. What props are you using on here? This is a three-bladed um, warp drive prop, and yeah. there's lots of options that they'll supply you as well. I thought it looked like warp drive. We've seen those for a long time. All right, so uh, Todd, would you show us around the inside of the uh, cockpit a little bit, and I'm going to hand you the microphone so we can be sure to hear you. So like we were mentioning to start with, the throttle is down here between your legs. Very easy to fold out of the way, very open to get in because of the center stick. Once you get in, you can fold that up between your legs and your hands on the stick. Like this over here. Very easy to reach everything, but still leaving lots of space. On this plane, we do have electric flaps. The basic model does come with a, a manual detent handle but we do have the electric flaps. Here's the control for the cowl flap that we are mentioning out front. Open and close that. And a light to indicate if we forget to open it, if it gets too hot. The basic instruments is your engine instruments, your oil pressure and oil and water temperature, fuel and, and uh, battery charge. And then the basic ones are your airspeed, altitude, vertical speed, and it actually has a digital um, tachometer. This one has the Garmin, or sorry, the Dynon Skyview system. So we've got the smaller instruments, but the basic one would have the larger size uh, airspeed and altitude. We do have cabin heat, carb heat in a choke. So all the options on starting the engine and keeping it warm. All right, so that was a good review of the inside of the airplane. And uh, by the way, I want you to do a little bit before we look at this uh, opening to the inside and we get the web address to find out more from you, Todd. Uh, tell me a little bit, run over some of the speeds that we did in flight, just in case all that didn't get captured. Uh, typical climb speed, typical climb rate, uh, typical cruise, how you handle things on your flight down here from Canada, uh, those kind of numbers. Tell, tell us some of those. Okay, well, starting at the low end, our stall speed is about 35 knots. No problem with that. We were doing that up in flight. It's got the Rotax uh, engine in it, so at uh, 5,000 RPM or 4,900 is the usual cruise uh, RPM. We were cruising along at 95 knots. That's about what I came down from Canada earlier this week. Although with the headwind, I think it was only 75 knots over the ground. Um, Takeoff, we're climbing out about uh, 55, 60 knots. That gives us about 800 to 1,000 feet per minute climb. No problem on that. Um, you know, and uh, talk to me about uh, slow flight characteristics and stall characteristics. Now, we just did a pattern thing, so we didn't actually, we got pretty close to a stall there, but uh, tell us a little bit about that, just so we've got that full flavor, Todd. Yeah, we, we were up there about 35 knots, just kind of hanging, not losing any altitude. It was Very stable. Yeah, very stable. Stable enough that both of us were hands off and feet off, and it was flying along no problem by itself. With the nose pointed to the moon yeah. and it still did that. Yeah, and we didn't lose any altitude and, and even when we were, you know, level and cruising, we were still pretty pretty straightforward, hands off. Okay, now let's talk just for a moment. Uh, you mentioned that it's a, uh, a, a composite exterior. This is just a skin. This is not the actual structure here, but I want to have you talk a little bit about that and then I want you to talk about what this material is here because this is not dope and fabric up here. Definitely not. So, uh, You'll see inside, it's a solid eight inch boom, aluminum boom from the tail all the way up to the front. The engine hangs on that as well. So I'll take this off. Uh, popular option, especially in Europe, is the parachute. You can put Mandatory it in Germany, so they all have it. So of course the Icarus does as well. Yeah, it's not on this airplane, but it is an option. So it looks like uh, six twist pins. And then look at the, I mean, look at the size of this thing. I mean, if you can't get a piece of luggage well, you're probably carrying too much if it fits in there easily, yep. uh, but that is a huge door opening. And look at all the space in there, and look at this giant tube. Just to, Here's my hand, just to give you some reference. I mean, I can't even get halfway around that tube. And that runs all the way up to the engine, which is hanging on that same tube. Yes. So there's your primary structure to the airplane, in a sense. see all the bracing here, the triangle frame. Oh, yeah, okay, uh-huh, yep. Well. 
So you can tell this is a grown-up ultralight, if you will. And the early ones, when they made one, it's called the C22. It looks more of something roughly like a Phantom. Yep. Uh, not not really like this at all, but this has that heritage very clearly. Yeah, so they've been in business now 40, 50 years. 45 years they've been in business, you said? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I know they are. I was just at the Aero Show earlier this year. They had a giant space there. They are the leading company. I mentioned this already. It's worth repeating. The leading company in Germany, which is one of the biggest countries in Europe for this kind of light recreational flying. And many of those are used in flight schools. A uh, great many of them, actually. And it's very popular with all kinds of recreational pilots. Tell me about this fabric, and then we'll get a web address from you. Okay. So... So this fabric, uh, to start with, we do have flaps and airlines, both, all independent. Um, as you saw inside, it was electric flaps in the two positions. This fabric is a, a DuPont poly vinyl. It's actually called Tedlar, and uh, I believe it's been used on the Goodyear blimp as well. So it's UV protected, good for outside, they say for 20 years. So uh, if, if they ever have a problem, it does come off in socks. They put it on the factory in socks. And then put the yeah, battens in. There, yep. yep. And there's zippers inside here that uh, allow you to do inspections inside. So. And, and then, um, does it use a set of ribs inside like a hang glider does to hold the shape in flight? Yes. There's battens inside here that are bent back and held in place. So it gives it the shape. Okay, very good. So that's a lot of good information about the C-42 Icarus from Germany, now represented in Canada. Tell us how we find you in Canada. you got a great website address, so uh, just tell us what it is, and we'll put it up on the screen for all our folks. Yeah, the Icarus, uh, we're lucky enough to get the Icarus call sign, Charlie, India, Kilo, Romeo, Sierra, and our website is very simply Icarus.ca. All right, very good. So a lot of information. I do have some information already on C-42 and even C-22 and some other reports about Icarus in years past. You can find that in lots of affordable aviation information on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Todd Mitten and myself here at the Midwest LSA Expo in Mount Vernon, Illinois.